Hi, I just pray and trust that you all had a wonderful week and uh, that you're looking forward to enjoying your weekend with your family, with your friends. And yes, you're going to make some plans to go to church over the weekend. Um, some of you might be looking forward to your Sabbath tomorrow. Um, that, you know, well, that is Saturday, that is. And um, there are many of us who look forward to our, um, to the Lord's Day, which is Sunday, and uh, where we can go and gather and we can just come together as brothers and sisters and um, just worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You know, I just wanted to stop by and um, to do this little video clip because as I was driving on my way home, I couldn't help but think about how close we are how near the coming of the Lord is. You know, as you look around, um, there is no denial. You can't deny the fact that um, all or majority of what the Bible spoke of and has spoken of um, has come to pass. And so the, the only thing um, really that um, you can say that is left to happen is for the appearing of Jesus Christ, the appearance of Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, the Bible lets us know that we would hear of wars and rumors of wars. And, um, you know, if there was ever a time that we're hearing about nuclear weapons and mass weapons of destruction and um, so many things happening. I mean, even when you look around and see um, how close we are to a cashless society, when we look at all of the smart cards and um, all of the things that are happening to synthesize people, to get people so comfortable so that when they slip in the, um, the chip, we know that there are many persons already who have received a microchip, um, you know, in their right hands or whatever. And now um, they also know that not everyone will be so open, open and so easy to receive that. So they are, you know, just getting people so accustomed to the comfort and messing with people's mind and telling people, you know, it'll be much easier for you to get the chip. It'll be much easier for you to, you know, do this and do that. And when I looked the other day, even here in Jamaica, when I look at the thousands of people who, um, you know, pressed their way through and waited for hours just to get the smart card so that their kids and themselves could ride the bus, so I couldn't help but just realize that it's not even so much about the people in a sense, but it's about the control, you know, worldwide. This is a global thing. So this is not a Jamaica thing or a Cayman thing or a American thing or a Canada thing. It is a unity thing with all those who are coming together and joining together to usher in the new world order. Now, I know there are some of you probably watching this and listening to this and probably saying, oh, I think she's gone now. You know, nothing, nothing like that ain't going to happen. Okay, continue to watch. And I pray that um, this video will, will be able to be found somewhere on Facebook or YouTube one day. When you go back, you'll be able to go back and say, Lord, the woman of God did prophesy it and it came to pass. And so, unless the church wake up, and as, unless when I say the church, I don't mean um, the name of a denomination or anything like that. I'm talking about um, those who have been born again, those who have decided to, 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 to walk the walk and talk the talk and live for God and trust him and take his word as it is. You know, I'm, calling, I'm talking about those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, those who have been saved and sanctified or set apart for sacred use. I mean, you know, unless the church wakes up and get back into the word of God, and especially now I believe in these in this end time, I believe while we're talking about all the prosperity and while we're talking about all of the other great stuff, you know, that's awesome. I think it's time for revelation. I think it's time for illumination. I think it's time now that we dive into the book of Revelation and we understand um, what John the, Revelator, John the Revelator saw in his um, vision, you know, as he was in the spirit. And I believe that we start, that we can, we need to start realizing what it meant when it says um, the things that you see now. 
um, the things that was and the things in the hereafter, you know, and um, get to understand exactly where we are. We are now in the Laodicean church. We are now in the church, um, the seventh church. We are now in the church um, that is called the will of the people. And um, look around. That's where we are right now, the will of the people. You know, people want to do their own thing. People want to rule. People want to live anyhow. And, you know, just, you know, be in the church. You know, doing everything is, you know, just church is normal. And, and the church has become lukewarm. And, um, you know, the fire of God is, has been, you know, um, trying to be put out. But there are still pastors, there are still men and women of God who refuse to let the fire go out in the church. Who refuse to let the church get lukewarm. Who refuse to cause any and anything to take place in the church. There are still discerners in the body of Christ. There is still men and women of God all over that has been placed, uh, appointed, anointed, and equipped by God to be watchmen and watch women. Men and women who sit on the wall 24-7. And when I say on the wall, it's not a physical wall, but on the spiritual wall, watching and praying and discerning and, 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 and being prepared to... To, to speak thus saith the Lord and to illuminate and enlighten those who are ready and willing, you know, and those who have a listening ear and who have um, eyes to see in the spirit realm, it is not pretty. You know, we're living in a, in a, in a serious time now, brothers and sisters and friends. And if I never leave anything else with you, I want to leave with you on this beautiful evening, wherever you are, beautiful night, beautiful morning, wherever you are. I want you to know that this is not the time to fall back. This is not the time to play church. This is not the time to mess around with your soul's salvation. This is the time to draw close to God. And this is the time to wake up. This is the time to preach the word in season and out of season. This is the time to preach the whole word of God. Not just about prosperity, not just the prophetic, not just those things, but you want to tell persons about holiness. You want to let persons know that there is a heaven, there is a hell. You want to let persons know that heaven is glorious and beautiful, but hell is a place of torment. You've got to preach the whole gospel now, brothers and sisters. And I just pray and trust that this exhortation has been so inspirational and edifying to you that you would want to shake yourself and wake up and say thank God for the word. You understand? And so I've done what the Holy Spirit bid me to do. And that's all I have to do. I mean, it's up to you whether you want to receive it or reject it. It doesn't make no difference to me. I just want to know that I'm obedient to the word of God. And I'm listening to the small, still voice of God. And that when he says speak, that I'm ready to speak. And so today, tonight, to this morning, wherever you are, I have spoken, thus saith the Lord. Wake up. Arise. For the light has come. And the light is now shining through those that have been illuminated and enlightened, enlightened by the word of God. God bless you. Until next time, this is your friend, Bishop Dr. Juliet Fagan. Shalom.